Hey y'all, Cooking the Fire here. Got Stacy and the boys with me. Hey y'all. Hey, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the new moon. I've done a search here in the King James Version for the word new moon. And we're going to be looking down through here, just pointing out some facts from the KJV related to the new moon. Okay. Now, um, the first verse here is Isaiah chapter 1 verse 14. He says, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. What do you think about that? Your new moons are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Um, I would suspect that the father is um, chastising them. Well, not necessarily chastising them, but to just um, making them recognize that um, some of the things that they're doing or some of whatever is happening with it within the new moon is not um, pleasing to him. And so now they need to address some things. The next verse is 1 Samuel 20 and 5 says, And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day. So here David's saying that he has to go to dinner with the king for the new moon. Mm -hmm. And is he saying that he'll, after the new moon, then he'll make his escape into the field? But let me go that I may hide myself in the field until the third day. Yeah, he ain't gonna go to the festival. He ain't gonna go okay. to the feast. Instead of going to the feast, he's actually gonna go hide. Right. Verse 18 says, and Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. So in other words, this is something they did every new moon. Right, he even had his assigned seat. Yeah. And so anything out of place on this new moon, the king would have noticed. Right. But it was extenuating situations, right, Stay? You want to tell them what was going on? Uh, here... Uh, what is happening is um, Saul is King Saul. turning a has turned an evil eye toward David who will soon um, be the appointed king that the father um, father has appointed David as the new king um, but Saul has an evil eye toward him and so David um, is basically running and um Maneuvering and just trying to be out of Saul's presence. Um, that's what's going on. Yeah, but implying that they normally aren't in one's presence, but now that it is the new moon, they about to be sitting at the same table. Mm. Right. Want to read verse twenty-four, please? So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. Now, this is more of a timing issue here than anything else, because you, you, when you count these days up, you understand the new moon being day one and, you know, then David is about to um, meet up with Saul. I mean, I saw with Jonathan, you know, and you can count the days here and you get an idea of what they were doing, you know, having feast and, you know, eating together on the new moon. It was something they did every well, there's something they did on the new moon. All right, now the next verse, unless anybody else got anything to say about King David, we're gonna go to 2 Kings 4 and 23. And he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Remember that story, Stan? Chris, yeah. Pull up KJV and look up no moon, please. Wait, what's going yeah, on? This here? story is when the lady who was um, 
the sun had fallen ill, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I believe so. And she um, was going to the prophet and, um, yeah. Yeah. To go into Elijah. Yeah. But the thing, the significance, I believe, of this verse is how it says, Why are you going to see the prophet? What are you going to see the prophet for? This ain't the new moon. Why are you going to see the prophet? Ain't the Sabbath day. Why are you going to see the prophet? So the significance of that is this is a day when you would actually go see the prophet, right? Right. The new moon and the Sabbath days. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? All right. You got it up here. Now the next verse, Stacy, is going to be First uh, Chronicles twenty-three and thirty-one. You want to read it? And to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Shabbat, in the new moons, and on the set feasts by number, according to the order commanded unto them continually before the Lord. All right, so what we got to say about this? And to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and the set feasts by number. What, what do y'all got to say about that? So it was during these appointed times that they would basically do every version of the burnt sacrifices? Yeah. Or... This is a time to do the burnt sacrifices. Right, everybody would do theirs then. Yeah, this is so the new moon along with the Sabbath days and the set feasts are a time of burnt sacrifices. Right? Right. All right. Now, the next verse is Second Chronicles 2 and 4. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. Forever. Right, so this is very similar to what we just read. This is a time when these type of activities are going on. Right. And of course they're spiritual in nature right now, right, Stay? Absolutely. But they're going on nonetheless on this particular day. On these days, Shabbat, uh, Sabbath day, solemn feast, and no moons. Alright, now the next verse, you click it away, y'all jump in. Y'all got something to add. Is Second Chronicles eight and verse thirteen. Even after a certain rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts three times in the year, even in the feast of unleavened bread, and the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And so I might have to back look on the context here to see what verse 12 says. Then Solomon offered burnt offers unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch. So this is part of the dedication. Right. Adding significance to the day. How this is, new moons are an important day. All right. Um, the next verse, I believe, is Second Chronicles 31 and 3. He appointed also the king's portions of his substance for the burnt offerings to wit, for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Shabbats and for the new moons and for the set feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. So this is written in the law that these things will go down on these days. All right, the next verse is Ezra chapter 3 and verse 5. And afterward, offering the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. No, to see, this is what the new moons are about, guys. At least what they're supposed to be about. Uh, Nehemiah ten and thirty three. For the showbread and for the continual meat offerings and for the continual burnt offerings of the Sabbaths. 
of the new moons for the set feasts and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel for all the work of the house of our God. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty of this all because it's talking about atonement here for Israel. And we all know that Israel is special. Israel is set apart. Israel is different. All right. One of the reasons why is because of these, what it's talking about here, Sabbaths, new moon, set feasts, and holy things. All right, now, so let's get into uh, Psalm chapter 81 and verse three. Blow up the trumpet and the moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Yeah. So now it's getting into the actual blowing of the trumpet. It's giving an action here. A lot of what we've read so far has been a lot to do with inaction, right? If you think about it, it's kind of saying that our Father's Day, our New Moon Day, is a set apart day. It's a holy day. That, and we all know by now that holy days require more inaction than action. All right. And so, but here is an action statement. Telling us to blow the trumpet. So up until now, we should be, uh, it should be pressing on our conscience, our heart on stuff that we shouldn't be. But this verse is a change unless it goes back the other way. This is a change saying what we should be. All right. Or should be doing because it says blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the time appointed on the solemn feast. So in other words, according to Psalms 81 and 3, we are supposed to be blowing the horn today. But let's go on to Isaiah 1 and 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. So, anybody surprised that he don't like how we're doing our new moon days? Anybody think that he should recant on that statement and say, hey, you need to relook at whatever you're doing on the new moon? You know. All right, so let's look at Isaiah 66 and 23. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So right now, it's kind of like people are expected to think they are instructed to only worry about such things on a new moon if they do. But, you know, not only is he saying that we ain't doing good enough so far on our new moon days that he has a problem with them back there in chapter one. But in chapter six, he's saying that there's coming a day when it ain't gonna matter. You're gonna worship me right from new moon to new moon all the time. You ain't gonna act right on the new moon or the Sabbath days or the feast days. It's gonna be a constant thing. Right. Anybody else? The next verse is Ezekiel 45 and 17. It shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. This is a day when we're getting emanations from the Lord and, and we're doing it in service of the Lord. And so it's an offering. All right. It may not be a burnt offering, but it is a work nonetheless to do. Well, let's go on. Let's look at 46 and 1. Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days. 
but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened. So the inner court is open today. The spiritual court is open. I'm gonna go play basketball. I'm gonna go hunting. I'm gonna go Let's look at uh, 46 and 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Shabbats and in the new moons. So this is a worship day. We read earlier it was a day of feasting. And we read a day of blowing in the trumpets. And then we read that it was a uh, worship day. We heard the, the day of the inner court. So this is not a regular day. Next one is Hosea 2 and 11. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Shabbats, and all her solemn feasts. Yeah. So in other words, there's coming a day when these, well, these days won't be recognized anymore. And if we click on it, see who is talking about in verse 11, verse 10. And now I discovered her lewdness in sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. Yeah, I knew it was talking about Israel. So even Israel one day, they ain't gonna care about the new moons, the Sabbaths, or the feast days. He says he's just and if you look, you can actually almost see how it's going down. Or never hold never mind. The next verse says, and I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she has said, Thou are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. Alright, let's go to Amos 8 and 5. Saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. Falsifying the balances by deceit. Do you understand what that means? Maybe what it's talking about is when some untrustworthy people would weigh their balances so that it seemed like you had less on your balance than you actually did. Yeah, you know, putting the thumb on it or something. Right. Yeah, but this is saying that they're falsifying the balances by deceit. So no other words, the shift in the balance is shifting the weight by the seat. If we back up a little bit, it says making the E5 small and the shekel great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click these other translations. Get down here in some of these other translations, like the CEB saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale, making the E5 smaller enlarging the shekel and deceive with false balances now you know what a shekel is right that's, mm -hmm. that's money yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's money right. so they're making the, the money more important making the money you know what the ephi is yeah the ephi is breastplate oh yeah that's part of the ephi so you have the choice who are you going to go when you got in God we trust everywhere so are you trusting the ephah or are you trusting the shekel so they're shifting the balances making it to where the ephah and the father's things are not so important shifting the balance towards the shekel money by deceit and the way they're doing this is by what does it say they're saying when will the new moons be gone so that we can sell. When would the Sabbath day be gone? So we can buy. Stuff like that. So when you do that, it makes money more important than God. Right. The last one is Colossians 2 and 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Or in respect of any holy day, 
or of the new moon or of the Sabbath. So in other words, don't let nobody stop you. When they say that the new moon ain't worth doing and we ain't supposed to do this and we can do that, don't, don't let nobody stop you from keeping your holy days. Don't let nobody stop you from keeping your Sabbath days. Don't let people talk you out of it. Right. 